morning, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning, doctors and doctors. Thank you for the honor to present my field, which is ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis, in front of you all. Just like how Dr. Jessica and how Dr. Zainab said, when you find a child with autism, you find one child with autism. Now, what happens after doctors like Dr. Jessica and Dr. Sainan diagnoses ASD or ADHD? That's where we come into play. So applied behavior analysis is a field that started in 1913. We will go first with the history. And, you know, my son does this, my son does this, but Nancy, why does my son do this? That part? How do we do things and how do we help children transition towards independence? And yeah, the numbers. We breathe, we live, we eat, and we sleep data. The history. How did India come about? This is just a small gist of the main points. In 1913, John B. Watson, he um, brought about the book in psychology as the behaviorist music. And then it moved on to 1924, where Kanta, he publicized the principle of psychology and goes ahead with 20 more books in the next 60 years. Then it comes to 1932, where B.F. Skinner, B.F. Skinner brought about the concept of operant conditioning. And then it moved on to behavior and organisms, 1953, again, uh, the behavior research laboratory, and 1998, when the BACB was, born, was formed, and which gave people like me and a lot of others to study behavior analysis and to understand why people do what they do and how we can help them move towards independence. So we as behavior analysts believe that for every behavior, there's a reason, there is a function. So if you're shaking your legs now, there is a function. If you're looking into your mobile, there is a function. If you are tapping on the table, there is a function. If you're sitting cross-legged, there is a function. If you're looking at me now when I speak, there is a function. So what is this function? It's the reason why people do what they do. So in ABA, in behavior analysis, we believe that any behavior, and behavior is anything that's observable and measurable. What you think in the head is not behavior for us, because we can't see it. We can't observe it and we can't measure it. And if we can't measure it, we can't take data. And if there's no data, it's not ABA. So there are four reasons why any organism engages in a behavior. Sensory, the reason why we shake our legs. There's no particular reason. We just shake it because we feel good, right? That's it, sensory. Second, escape. Oh, I want to escape from your presentation. It's quite boring, so I'm going to look into my mobile and type messages. That's escape. Third, attention. Just screaming and creating a big drama so that you get the attention. And just like how I would a fancy necklace just so that you would get the attention from some of the ladies who like accessories. The fourth one, access. Access to tangibles, access to people, access to things. And there's always two ways to engage in a behavior. This good behavior, this bad behavior. Appropriate, inappropriate. Now how do we do this? What happens once doctors like you diagnose ASD or ADHD or whatever the syndromes it is, because honestly, I do not know the medical part of it. We are not authorized to diagnose. We are only authorized to design and implement and evaluate for efficacy of treatment. So I do not know anything about diagnosis. Once it is diagnosed and once they come for ABA, this is what we do. We start with ABC analysis, ABC analysis and data taking. Then we move and create a behavior intervention protocol. Then we go ahead with the skills assessment, a very, very detailed skills assessment. And just like how Dr. Jessica said in the beginning, there are just so many assessments and there is no one standardized path that we can take. It all depends on the BCBA who you send your child to, what assessment, and also the skills level of the child that we decide what assessment we go with. And then the last part is the implementation, the data analysis, and the efficacy. 
Now there's a time period for all of this. When do we take ABC data and what exactly is ABC data? ABC stands for antecedent behavior consequence. Behavior is behavior. Antecedent is what happens right before the behavior. Consequence is how the environment reacted to this child or this person after he did the behavior. So when you look at it, for example, don't underestimate a BCBA or an alien therapist because we take down everything from the moment your child put, puts his step foot into our center till the moment he steps up. So this is just one amongst the hundreds of data we take per day, per child, in six hours for the first two weeks. So 11, 11, 2022, 20, 10, 30, NG is Nancy, Nancy George, NG is sitting in a chair, uh, sitting on chair in class 132, NG is sitting across from child. This is how specific we need to be because the person who's reading it needs to visualize it the same way it happened. And then what happened? So I take an apple, I keep it on the table, and give my SD. Let's put a disconnect to stimulus or my command, which is, what color is this? And then what happens, the child grabs the apple with the right hand, throws it at me, holds the table with both hands, flips the table over, and backs his head backward at the wall 12 times. And then what do I do? I hold the pillow behind his head to soften the blow without giving eye contact to the child. And I ask another therapist to clear the table and the surroundings. He cried for 16 seconds without tears and then stopped behavior. The whole episode was for 3 minutes 26 seconds. This is how detailed we take data. And when we go ahead and take data over and over and over and over again, for something similar to this, we see a pattern. And once we get the pattern, we study the pattern. Then we know exactly what is the child going to do. And what do we do? to prevent it and move it from an inappropriate behavior to an appropriate behavior. So the next step, and this is what happens, after two weeks of taking back-to-back -back ABC data. Now, if you're wondering why are we taking two weeks of ABC data, because when a child comes into a new place, it's a new place. It's scary, it's not comfortable for him. He doesn't know you, he doesn't know us, he doesn't know the environment. So it's very natural for a child to cry. And then we wait, we pair, the first week is complete pairing, make it fun for the child and, you know, get into their bubble. They trust us, we trust them, we know them. And then comes the second week. Uh-uh. That's where we start assessment. We keep giving them demands over and over again, and then we get to see what all they are capable of. So once we do this, this is how we analyze data. So we see, okay, this is what the child's going to do. This is the setting that it happens most in and this is the frequency of behavior. So according to this, now we need to devise a plan. That's where the second part comes in. And then, um, okay, I see that the two bottom most escape and access is quite smudged, but we analyze it like this. So for automatic, for sensory, what is he doing? What all will he do? For attention, what else is this child going to do? For escape, what is he going to do? And for access, what's the child going to do? And based on it, we make, we define the behavior. So we can't just say, oh, a child is crying. No. Is he crying with tears? Is he making sounds? Is he closing his eyes? Does he flex his face? Is there a change in his facial expressions? So we need to know what data we are taking so it's consistent across people, across settings, and across activities, which is why we define behavior. So for example, what's crying? Any instance when a child cries with or without tears for attention. Now this is specific to a child. So we've noticed this child only cries for attention, which is why we write attention. Now do we start our time at the moment he starts crying? No. So we need to be consistent, which is why episode starts when the child starts crying, turn the timer on, and when there is an absence of behavior for 30 seconds. So each behavior for each child is individualized and then defined so that the data that we take is consistent. Now this is the behavior intervention protocol. I purposely used colors. I'm not a big fan of colors, but I just wanted you all to look into my slide, which is why I used all these fancy colors. Now, um, so for example, if there's a self-injurious behavior of a child biting himself, and we've already, we have the ABC analysis, so we know exactly why he's biting. So we know that he's biting for access and he's biting for escape. And so what do we do? 
DRA minding. What do we do before all this happens? What are we going to train him on extensively? DRA minding. Minding basically means teaching him to talk. And when we decide on the path to teach him to talk, it's completely child-centric. If he wants to, if we see that he is more inclined towards an ABC, so be it. If it's textbook, so be it. If it's sign language, no problem. If it's eye contact or pointing, that's fine too. So it all depends on the child's skills, on what and how we select his manding criteria. Providing place for nice house, white house, visual, visual reminder of thumb body, toddler delight, access program, token boards, all this is what we will implement before the child gets into behavior. Now once he gets into a behavior, every therapist who works with this child will do the same thing. So that the child learns, oh, no matter what I cry, I scream, I yell, I hit this person, nothing's going to happen. They're still going to behave the same way. So this particular method of me behaving is not going to work anymore. I need to do this if I need to get this. This is how we change. Trust me, we're very, very patient people. We're very patient. Only at work. Only at work. Let me refine it. If I redefine it again, because my husband here knows exactly how I am once I'm at home back home. <laughs> so, um, so what do we do if, for access? We're going to prompt the child to command the way the child understands best, and then we're going to show the visual. Okay, you're going to get it, but show me palm body and point mouth. We're going to help the child sit nicely for a while until he calms down. Why do we do this? Because we don't want him to feel, oh, I screamed, I yelled, and immediately they're making me point. So next time I want them to help me to man, I need to scream and yell. No, we need to break the contingency between the screaming, crying, manning, and then getting what you want. So we're breaking the contingency, and then we give, once he's calm, then we provide what he needs for, again, differentially. So if he asks without crying, screaming, yelling, he's going to get a big chunk of what he wants. And if he's doing it all after this, and he mounts with our help, he will still get it, but a little bit of it. So that way he understands slowly and steadily. This doesn't happen over a day. It might not even happen over a week. There are children who we have worked with for months to achieve something like this, but we've gotten there. Now, this is just a sample of the assessment. This is just one of the assessments. This happens over the next four to eight weeks once we have an ABC analysis, and then we've got a behavior intervention plan. So we are following the behavior intervention plan to the dot, and then comes the baby maths. So the skills in red, the lines in red, on the right hand side are the skills that the child already has and yellow are the ones that we set for the next one year. And then there's a barriers grid. So we first work on the barriers grid and communication. We build that up and then we go to the other side of it. So I just need out a couple of them on the barriers grid. Self-stimulation, defective articulation, obsessive compulsive behavior, hyperactive behavior, failure to make eye contact sensory defensiveness. So for each of this little segment that you see, there is a path that's devised. There is a protocol that's put in place. And everyone consistently keeps giving the child the same input over and over again, day in and day out. Now, how do we know it's works? Retrating my words again. We eat, sleep, breathe data. So there you go. This is just a sample of one of the behaviors, so you see how we actually do this. Um, on the x-axis, what you see are the session numbers, and on the y-axis is the frequency. And um, that's how we take. So if you look at flopping, we went with one, two, three, four. There was no duration of flopping. And then all of a sudden, it just spiked up for a reason, and it came down. There's always a reason. I'm just kidding. Um, and then it keeps increasing, and then we started OT and music intervention. Hmm, the behavior started increasing. All the person probably wants escape, and then music intervention has been um, inconsistent, not consist consistently. The behavior came down, but again, it's going up and down. So this is still continuing, so we can't still say what's happening. Duration of crying, if you see, there was nothing because it was all fun and pairing and playing with the child. Behavior demand starts, behavior starts full fledged, ODA music intervention started. Full fledged, the behavior started piking and then it came down. So, for everything, we have data. Now, do we work alone? No. No man can live on an island, and no man is an island. I know Tom Hanks did at one, one, one point of time, but trust me, no man is an island. 
um, the collaborative approach. So we work in collaboration with speech, OT, equine therapy, music therapy, workshop and art therapy, sports therapy. We are not alone. We don't work alone. We work hand in hand. We work with speech. We take accurate, consistent, detailed data. Do we provide speech? Yes, we do. We have our own way of um, building echo waves and building a tact repertoire and moving from tact to mass. We have our ways too, but we work hand in hand with speech. So the same goals that are set for speech are set in ABA as well. There are different approaches, but we go towards the same goal. And that's why it works, because we all work together for one common goal in our, in our different paths. So this is how we build our mining at the center. If you see on the top post, the, di the, uh, the diagonal, not the diagonal, sorry, the diamond is the independent man, to be asked by himself, and the other one is the prompted man, where we have the child to man. Do you see after the face line? Okay, so we started OT, and, um, we started quite interventions of uh, 15 months per hour, and all of a sudden there's a huge fight in the frequency and a percentage of the child's funding. And then we work on toilet sales, helping the child move towards independence. We don't just expect miracles over a day. We work on it consistently absolutely and gradually to bring about the change. So this is toileting data. Focus on the greens. I purposely made it green today so it's easier for us to track. And the reds are the accidents that the child has. If you see progress, that's there. That's there. The change from the reds completely to a point where it stops to a point where it moves completely to green. Stereotypy, repetitive behaviors, water, vocal stereotypy, we take data for that too. And for this, we work hand in hand. We follow something that's called RIRD, which is a response intervention, redirection, that's a completely different approach. At the same time, OT works on their goal and that's how we tackle it. This is how we take data, we share our data with OT, we sit together and we devise further plans. We are also the way to inclusion and transition to schools. So once we see that there's a certain level that our child has reached, we help them move to schools. We go with them, start with 10 minutes, see what they need, what are the skills they lack, how do we work on it, come back to the center, work on these skills and help them move towards independence. Thank you. I don't think we have time for questions, but these are my details. I will leave you all with just this one word, that it takes a lot of extra sparkle to touch little lives. And if they cannot learn the way we teach, we teach them the way we learn. they learn. Thank you very much and have a lovely rest of the day.